It is new video showing the moments an LMPD officer shot and killed an unarmed man during a traffic stop nearly two years ago in 2019. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Doug Prophet. LMPD came out the next day to say that there were no body cameras being worn by the plainclothes officers and no video showing what happened. But someone's home camera was recording right nearby and we are now seeing that video for the very first time. The night team's Tyler Emery details what it shows. LMPD's robbery unit made the stop on a car connected to a string of violent robberies in May 2019 in Jefferson Town. The driver, Duantez Mitchell, who an internal investigation later found to be unarmed, was shot and killed by LMPD officer Brian Arnold during that interaction. But we never saw the moments when it happened until now. Robbery unit investigators wore plain clothes and weren't required to have body worn or dash cameras. In this case, we have neither of these types of video to share. New footage from a neighbor's home security camera paints a new picture of what happened. It is not consistent with the narrative that LMPD put out on this case. Greg Sims and Hal Friedman are attorneys representing Juan Mitchell's estate. His family filed a wrongful death lawsuit last year. To get to the truth, what happened to uh, Mr. Mitchell? And why did it happen? The video happens quickly, the shooting within a matter of seconds. It shows the start when Mitchell's car is stopped and surrounded by three plainclothes to LMPD officers, guns drawn. There's no original audio on the footage, but LMPD reports show officers say they gave verbal commands to Mitchell, which he didn't respond to. A Jefferson Town officer, Sarah King, now pulls up and runs toward Mitchell's car with her gun drawn. Arnold told investigators he instructed King to go back to her cruiser and block in Mitchell. This is where things happen fast. As she runs back, the car moves forward and Arnold fires shots. When you look at the path of Juan Mitchell's car, it certainly appears to be involuntary. Sims says they believe Arnold fired shots before Mitchell ever moved his car or it happened at the same time. Arnold told investigators he heard the car revving and felt like he and Officer King were in imminent danger of being killed or run over. He says Mitchell starts to accelerate and then he fired several shots. Officer King told investigators while her back was turned, she heard shots fire and then turned to see Mitchell's car coming at her. Either way, that's a big problem because if he shoots before the car moves, that's objectively a, an improper use of deadly force and arguably criminal homicide. You have the three officers there all able to perceive and hear what's going on and the three officer statements are diametrically opposed. The day after the shooting in 2019, then Chief Steve Conrad held a press conference where LMPD said Arnold fired his weapon because Mitchell's actions endangered the lives of officers. From the top down, this was an immediate decision to say we're going to exonerate this officer. The PSU investigation into the incident has closed and the file reveals Arnold's interview transcript. In the week after, he told investigators he looked at me and made eye contact. He then looked back down again. At that moment, I knew that it was going to go bad and I was in a bad situation where I could get hurt or killed. That's the heart and soul and problem of this case. Arnold was placed on administrative leave at the time, but no disciplinary action was taken at the close of the internal investigation. If anything good can come out of uh, Mr. Mitchell's death, it would be further transparency. It would be that the family gets the truth of what occurred, and it would hopefully be incremental change in our system and the way we go about policing. We've reached out to Allen PD about the case, and they say they don't comment on pending litigation. For the night team, I'm Tyler Emery.